wait, 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 where am I? I gotta figure out to put the speaker in. Yeah. You were looking. No, we don't have any viewers yet, though, so that's good. Here, let's right. make it down to you. Those people don't go to rewatch it, though. There we go. Hey, oh, Ricky. look, really a few Adamers watching you. Hello, everyone. Mm, I don't. Did you tag me? Did I what? Did I tag you. I put your name in. I don't know if it tagged you, though. Sometimes it doesn't Top of the afternoon to you. There you are. Okay. Hello, Sherry. Okay. How are you all doing and feeling today? Are you happy with this or should I try to lower it further? No, that's fine. That's really, that's good. Okay. Well, don't forget to tell everybody who you are. Hey, everyone. Um, just give it everyone a moment to tune in. But if you would like to, uh, send me a waving emoji. Let me know that you're here and you're going to stay tuned because today we'll be talking about the importance of art and education. You still didn't tell me who you were. Oh, because we haven't started. That you don't think they want to know what you think they say. But see, we have people. I got to share it. I need to share this. If you could do me a favor and share this because this is going to be some important information today. All right, here we go. So, what's up everybody? It's the poet, the artist, the creator, and energy curator, Drika Morning, and we are live at the Arkansas Arts Council. And I'm so excited to be here. Robin said something about audio. Can everybody hear me? Yep, the audio is not good. It's turned all the way up. Hey, all right, if, if you can hear me, clap once. <laughs> oh no. Somebody sent me a waving hand, so that must mean people can hear. Yeah. Okay. So again, I'm Drika Morning. I'm the newly appointed Arts and Education Program Manager here at the Arkansas Arts Council. I started back in um, October, and as you heard me state previously, I'm a poet, an artist, and a creator, and I've worked, my background is in teaching uh, poetry and creative writing. So uh, for the past six years, maybe my whole adult life basically, I've taught poetry and creative writing as a way to help students increase their communication skills, comprehension skills, and to teach them how to use it as um, a coping mechanism because as we all know, art is therapeutic. Um, and, it's, and when I found it, it found me in a time of my life where I just needed to express myself as a young lost child in high school so yeah that's basically <laughs> what i wanted to share <laughs> this is so hard yeah it is hard let's get closer to you Ooh, what i didn't you touch you <laughs> she looks <laughs> can you show them what you look like uh, okay So some of the work that I've done um, here, because I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas, I'm 26 years old. I graduated from the University of Central Arkansas. I got my degree in insurance and risk management, surprisingly, and I don't do anything with that um, because I've always done art. But uh, starting when I was, I believe, 19 in Little Rock, Arkansas, there was a school called, or is a school called, Henderson Middle School. And I worked with Love, the Love Program, under the, the direction of Sheila Hayes. And it was an after school program where um, students, they got a chance to really develop their life skills and personal skills with us. And I specifically taught the poetry and creative writing. And we would do speech competitions. And what I've learned is that kids have something to say. Students, the young people, the youth, they have something important to say. And it's important that we create a space for them to be able to do that. Um, and for them not to feel like they can't talk. Um, and some don't even know they need to talk. That's why it's important to check on the mental health of students, and you can do that through doing poetry writing exercises. And you'll be surprised at the things that students really talk about. Um, I've had students talk about feminism, pollution, the president, 
in elementary school. So when I realized that they really have a voice, they, they actually process what's going around them as well, it um, made me realize that we need to be more intentional about um, giving them that space to speak. And I also work as a behavior coach with Reclaiming Scholars, which is in, um, an alternative to suspension program. And with that program, basically what happens is um, when students get suspended from school, the administration can recommend that they come to us. And if they come to us, it's an alternative to suspension program, so they basically would spend their suspension time with us instead of at home because going home actually sounds fun. But <laughs> coming with us, they get we literally would work with them on behavior modification. And again, my angle um, to help them was to use art. And what I would do would literally um, just allow them the space to express themselves. And once students feel they're safe and that they, you know, can talk to you, it's better and easier to work with them, surprisingly. So if you work with at risk youth or students who are, you know, a little hyperactive, we won't call them bad. Um, if you work with those kind of students, you'll be amazed at how using art can transform, transform their behavior and their relationship because one of the most important things that I like to talk about is after doing, um, completing the Reclaiming Scholars program, um, the students literally, uh, they got in less trouble. Like we, we kept up with them throughout the school year and the students that came to us, they were like repeat offenders. Like, you know, they got suspended a lot and coming through the program and using arts, I believe really helped reduce that suspension rate. So again, art is important and not just poetry. I talk about poetry because that's what I've done, but um, painting and drawing, music, it's so important to have in the school system, which is gonna bring me to my next point, which is why I am here and I need you all to start sharing this video so that other people can get this information. I'm gonna talk about the artist well, the arts and education roster that we have here at the Arkansas Arts Council. So, the arts um, and education roster is basically an online, um, an online collection of artists throughout the state who teaches workshops based on their art. So, on our roster now, we have a variety of artists. We have poets. We have actors. We have drummers, we have people who do puppetry, um, the symphony orchestra, what else, Scarlett? I don't know. Everything, we have a <laughs> lot true. a lot of different artists who offer workshops throughout the state. And one of the benefits of being on the, on the roster is the fact that people from across the state literally go to the website to find different people to bring in to teach workshops to their students, um, K through 12. and. On, so, so with being on it, uh, you got the opportunity to expand your visibility. And also, if an, um, if an organization books you, they can actually apply for um, one of our lifelong mini grants, which is up to $1,000, and they can be reimbursed up to 40% of whatever your fee is to bring you in. So that's another thing, you know? tap in. If you go to ArkansasArts.org, you can get more information um, because the process of getting on the roster, um, I won't say, it's, it's not difficult, but you, um, with the application, we want to see that you've actually done this work in the past, that you know how to implement, you know, art into the curriculum because one thing that we do ask for in the application is that you provide a lesson plan, and the lesson plan has to align with um, the Common Core Standards for Arkansas. So, if you can show that you can effectively do that, um, that's one of the parts that go into the application. And the lesson plan only has to be for one grade, but just because you do it for one grade doesn't mean that's the only grade you can work with. Um, you literally can work with K through 12, any grade, um, depending on what you prefer. I like middle school, not to be biased, but they're like in that weird age where you can still kind of give them instructions and they can do stuff on their own. So it's a pretty good grade to work with. And applications are panel reviewed, right? Mm-hmm. 
So to add on, thank you, Scarlett. <laughs> All right, if you apply to be on the arts and education roster, there is an application process. I'm just gonna ask for a, a lesson plan. I'm gonna wanna see some uh, pictures of you actually working with students, some examples of some student work that you have, maybe some feedback or uh, surveys that you've got in the past with um, students you worked with in the past or from the teacher. And once you submit your application, which the application is now due on July 24th, I have extended the date um, from July 10th to July 24th. So July 24th is the deadline. Once you submit your application, uh, we actually do have a panel that will review your application to see if we feel you are a good fit to be listed on the roster because um, on our roster we do have qualified artists and you know that's the angle we want to go with when we're adding people to um, our, our roster list. So once it's reviewed by the panel um, we'll actually have a call and that information about that date will go out you know to whoever submits um, an application but on the day of the panel review you'll be able to um, tune in to the call as we review your application. So literally, I'll be on the phone with a few more um, artists who will be uh, reviewing the applications and you'll actually be on as well as we discuss your application. And if we have any questions, you'll be present for us to um, ask those questions and it'll give you a chance to uh, further expound on anything that we may have questions about. So um, once that's completed, we'll review amongst each other and decide whether or not you made the cut and once I do that I'll let you know if you made it or not and then there's a big party <laughs> yeah, I, mean. I don't throw the party but you can throw a party for yourself um, which would be pretty cool so the arts and education roster go to ArkansasArts.org and you can find more information about that roster on the website and if you have any comments questions or concerns you can definitely reach out to me I'll be more than willing to help you if you reach a spot where you're just like I don't know what do they mean what should I do oh my god I don't get this I don't get that just call me or email me and my email is on the website but if you want me to tell you now I'll go ahead so it's drika.morning and morning like good morning drika.morning at arkansas.gov and no, no, yeah, org. No, no. Arkansas. I'm sorry. No. So the website <laughs> is arkansasarts.org, but yeah. my my email is drinka.morning at arkansas.gov. Yeah. So thank you to Sherry and the Arkansas Arts Council for posting those links. I appreciate it. And again, are we doing virtual? Are we funding virtual mini grants? Oh, so due to COVID, I know a lot of people aren't able to do workshops um, in, person. in person. So virtual, <laughs> virtual workshops are permitted. Uh, we have decided that that is, um, we will fund virtual workshops. So if you've had to go from physical workshops to online workshops that's perfectly fine um, again if you have any questions about anything feel free to reach out or if you got a question feel free to drop it in the comments here yeah so great thanks for putting my email that's nice that was really nice all right so again the Arkansas Arts Council offers so much if you go to the website, you can find a lot of it. But I know a lot of people don't like to read, so I'll just kind of tell you about some of the other things that we have. Um, we have grants. Surprise! <laughs> and uh, specifically, some of our arts and education grants that we offer. Um, we have an after-school and summer uh, residency program grant. Um, and the deadlines for these have passed, but you can start getting prepared for next year. So we have the after school and summer um, program grant, one for arts curriculum and one for uh, an in-school residency. So 
if you again go to the website you can get more details on those there is one that's not passed, the Lifelong Learning for yeah. Veterans. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. And we have the Lifelong Learning Mini Grant for Veterans. So if you um, are an organization that caters to veterans or an artist um, who wants to teach workshops to veterans, we have a Lifelong Mini Grant specifically catered toward veterans and seniors, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, and it's, a, it's up to $1,000. It's a matching grant, so. The veterans one's not. You don't have to match it. Okay. Sorry. I lied. <laughs> so, the lifelong learning mini grant for veterans and seniors is not a matching grant. Okay? The veterans one. Just the veterans one. <laughs> but our regular. <laughs> hey, Legina. And Legina, she's on the, on the roster. Um, Beard in Productions. Um, check her out. That's cool. Right. Thanks for tuning in. She always tunes in. How are things going at going with Ava? Amy, I love you. <laughs> so something new that we started is um, our Ava submission. So basically what we do, we're soliciting art from students across the state. And you can submit uh, any poetry you may have, any music, any visual art pieces that you may have, and we'll post it on our website. But this is just a way for us to show um, community engagement. We want to showcase your work and you never know, somebody might run across it and want to buy it or want to book you. So encourage any students that you have or know um, or your own kids to um, submit some art to be posted on um, the Arkansas Arts Council's social media platforms. Um, again, it's a great way to expand visibility, you know, to get your work out there, and um, just to show that you are participating in the arts, especially during this time of COVID. Um, and something that I've been really talking to people about during this time, being an artist, being an artist is so important. Um, we're the documenters. Is that a word? It is now. The documenters. And I'm a poet, so I get to make up words. Thank you. Uh, we are the documenters of history. So if you're an artist, you have to document what's happening. If you can communicate that through your poetry, um, through painting, photography, um, this is just a great opportunity to document history because you never know. Uh, your photo or your poem or your song or your dance or your puppetry show or... Oh, I hope there's a puppet. Please somebody <laughs> submit a puppet show. It could be in the history books because I feel like we're living through a very historical moment. And as artists, sounds weird to say take advantage of it, but take advantage of it. <laughs> so what about Poetry Out Loud? Thank you. Y'all are so awesome. So one of the biggest programs that we have here at the Arkansas Arts Council is Poetry Out Loud. And Poetry Out Loud is a national recitation competition for high school students. So it was designed to help encourage um, the study of poetry. So students from all across the states participate in this competition. So there's three parts to the competition. There is um, a school level competition where students compete against each other within their own school. And whoever wins from the school competition, they go on to their state competition. And I'm over the state competition for um, Arkansas. So this year, um, well, let me just finish telling you about the order of it. So we have the state competition. And once we complete the state competition, whoever wins from our state competition goes on to nationals, which is usually held, well, it's always held in Washington, DC. And from there, students get a chance to literally win $20,000 in cash prizes. And I'm not talking like a scholarship for college that you gotta wait on, but like $20,000 for first place. Second place is 10,000. Third place is 5,000, I believe. And then fourth through 12th or 11th get $1,000. So the first, I think it goes to 11. Um, yeah. it's, it's pretty steep. Yeah. But that's very, you know, motivating. If I'm a high school student, I definitely would want to recite a poem for $20,000. Yeah. 
<laughs> and then on a state level, um, the first place winner wins $200 and they get a $500 stipend um, for their school to buy poetry material. And the second place winner gets $100 for themselves and a $200 stipend goes to the school for them to purchase uh, poetry material as well. So this year, um, again, because of Corona, we are reworking how we'll approach Poetry Out Loud because we're not sure if we'll be able to have it, um, a physical competition in person, which really changes the dynamic of the whole um, competition because this competition is based on, it, it's a recitation competition. So they're taking other people's work and interpreting it through their voice and their body language. So we're just trying to find an effective way to be able to do it and still uh, follow the rubric to be able to grade them appropriately, like based on their um, body language, tone, um, whether or not they memorize the whole poem. So um, this this cycle, I'm sure it'll most likely be an online competition, but whether we do it live or via Zoom, um, that has not been decided yet. Uh, right now, all the POL, uh, instructors across the world we've been meeting and trying to find a system that we feel would be um, most effective in administering the competition so please stay um, tuned in to get more information but we will open up registration for schools in August I say August or July we will, be August, we will open up yeah we will open up we will open up registration uh, for schools in August. Mm -hmm. Wish I could hear. Hey Tammy, what do you want to hear? Uh oh. Legina, I love, I love, I love the poetry competitions. And Legina actually has been um, a judge for the competitions. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks for tuning in today. And we had to cancel this year's, but we yeah. do have video of previous years mm -hmm. on our YouTube channel and oh, yeah. on our uh, online. On yeah. our Right. What is that website? <laughs> yeah. So if you would like to see some of the competitions we've done in the past, you can check out our YouTube to see some from the previous years. This past year, it was canceled, which hurt my poor little feelings. But um, it's okay. We live and we learn. But our competition was set for March 13th, and because of Corona, it got canceled two days before it was supposed to happen which was, you know, really disappointing because students really put in a lot of work for this competition. They have to memorize the poems and actually practice so that they can be able to effectively communicate the poem with their whole being, basically. Um, but something that um, is really nice that the Poetry Foundation has done, they are actually giving each state who didn't get to, um, no, they're giving each state a $1,000 and that thousand dollars can go to whoever won the state finals, or it can be distributed amongst the finalists who were um, lined up to participate in the state finals. So that's something that's really cool that the Poetry Foundation has done. So the students that we had lined up to participate in finals, they'll actually still, you know, get a little money, um, which I think is great because originally only one or two people could win, well, two people could win money. But now everybody gets gets a little piece of change. Um, and it may not be a lot, but I think it's really um, a nice gesture. Uh, what else, Scarlett? We got any questions going on, Broadway? Any questions, comments, or concerns? I feel like I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so happy to be right here now. But just to recap for anybody who's just tuned in, I need you to go to the Arkansas, um, ArkansasArts.org and check out the arts and education roster. And if you know any artists who um, are into conducting workshops um, based on whatever art they, they use, um, be sure to share this information with them to apply to be on the arts and education roster. It has many benefits, um, again, you gain more visibility because you'll be listed on our website and uh, whoever books you actually gets an opportunity to apply for 40% um, of your fee to be reimbursed back to them. I think that's, that's a great, that's a great benefit, you know? 
And again, if you need help, you can always contact me. I'm here to be of service to all the artists. All right. What else should I tell you all? This has been a really good day, though. What have you all been creating? Are you all creating any art? If you've been creating any art, let us know. What have you been doing? Any poetry? Any visual arts? Any painting? Anything? Just let us know in the comments. And before I leave, again, I, d I did, because I'm the arts and education program manager, I do like to stress the importance of arts and education. Like we need the arts in our academic system because it helps students develop on a different level. Like art just does something for the spirit. It helps develop social skills, risk taking skills. Like art gives you the freedom to create and be whoever you wanna be. So students, and I think everyone, everyone needs an opportunity to be able to explore um, what's inside of them because if we're not creative then things don't get created. So um, where we are now is a direct reflection of art, I believe, because somebody was creative. Somebody thought, somebody thought like, wow, let me draw a building and like make it. Somebody thought about, is there it's any the art behind this? The chairs that you're sitting in. The chair that I'm sitting in. Somebody designed this hat. Well, um, Arkansas Living Treasure actually made these chairs. Wow, so an Arkansas Living Treasure recipient mm -hmm. designed this chair, and it's a rocking chair. It's pretty nice. So think about that, that's art. That is art. And students need that space to create so that they can be the ones to create all the other great things that are to come for our future. And some things that I wanted to suggest that you can do with I mean, and not even just students too. If you have older kids that are in college, or even for yourself, some things that you can do at home to incorporate art into your everyday life is to actually, um, and this is something that I do with my niece, and this helps build comprehension skills. So we'll listen to music, literally, literally listen to a song. And after the song, I always ask them, you know, what do you think about it? What do you think that song meant? And we'll pick out certain um, lines from the song and talk about it. Like, what do you think they meant when they said this? And I think that's a great way to get um, the mind going and thinking, because as we know, music uses a lot of figurative language. And there's so many creative ways to say some of the most basic things, but being able to listen to music <clears throat> and being able to break it down and teaching, especially the younger ones how to do it, uh, so important. So you can listen to music. I, I think that's that's an artistic thing to do. Um, listen to music, break down the lyrics. Uh, you could paint. Another thing that we did, we uh, I decided I would choose a certain um, amount of colors. Well, no, we used all all the regular colors that you don't have to make up, and we looked up what each color symbolized, and what she had to do was create an art piece. Um, using colors that described um, a message that she wanted to, wanted to communicate. And um, I wish I could show y'all the picture, but she drew like a sun and just flowers and stuff. And she explained, she explained what each part meant. But again, when you're creating art, it gives you an opportunity to be able to talk and to develop social skills, life skills, and it just gives you an opportunity to communicate uh, with the youth and to understand what they're dealing with or going through. So that's another thing you could do. You could paint, you can listen to music and break it down. What else can you do, Scarlett? Um, you can make things. Food is an art. Our next thing is to make ice cream. And with that, science and art. Right, <laughs> you're, you're incorporating, again, the arts and education part. You, you'll be incorporating science. Um, on how different solids and liquids and chemicals and all those different things, like how do they um, work together to create something. Okay, Legina, BP students. Okay, Building Production students are currently in production for our second online musical. Show dates are July 17th and 19th. 
more than 14 Arkansas students are involved. We're excited. That is nice. July 17th and July 19th, will, there will be an online musical. Um, and can we see that on your page, Legina, or post the link or, or Beard, Beard, Beard in Productions? Oh yeah, post a link. Post a link. <clears throat> Okay, that is really nice. Um, anybody else doing anything? So, just to add to my list again, what did I say? You can listen to music, break it down. You can create paintings. What was the third thing? Ice cream. You can make ice cream or make anything, really. Slime. For some reason, kids really love slime. They will not let that wave go. <laughs> oh, okay. Play doh, make um, masks. You can play doh. Um, makeup is even an art. That's true. I struggle. My eyebrow. And so your eyebrow. Did you do the side of your cheek? Or I did. It's really nice. Look, look at the. I was looking at that earlier. I was like, oh. It has dimensions. I, yeah. I struggle with makeup. It's me too. I've been practicing since we've been in quarantine. I've had free time. Okay. Um, to anybody else who just tuned in, I just want to recap one more time. I know the people who've been here, y'all probably tired of me saying the same thing, but some people do tune in late. So go to ArkansasArts.org. Check out the Arts and Education roster. Share this with your friends and family. Um, any artists who are interested in teaching their art in the in education, uh, this even is a great virtually. opportunity, and you can even do it virtually. You can do it virtually. Why? That's probably your only option, actually, <laughs> with Corona. But do that. Um, check out some of the grants that we offer that you can apply for in the future. Um, be on the lookout for Poetry Out Loud. Uh, the registrations for Poetry Out Loud for sc uh, for schools and homeschools um, will open in August. And yeah. Oh, and something I wanted to add about Poetry Out Loud that was so nice um, this year was the fact that the Arkansas School for the Blind, they were participating. They actually had their um, their competition earlier this year, and they had good participation. Scarlet was there. I didn't actually get to see it. I saw the video, it but yeah. it was just a beautiful experience. And here at the Arkansas Arts Council, we really um, strive to be diverse and accessible to all people. And that was just just a beautiful uh, experience. And I would have loved to see it happen on final stage, but it didn't, which is okay. Your hair is prettier than our regular presenter. <laughs> is that shade, Jamie? I <laughs> okay. Okay. Super happy, awesome news, the virtual musical. That actually sounds exciting. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I'll be tuned in. We should do our next show as a musical. Our next show? Yeah. What show? This Art Talks. Our next Art Talks. We can make it a musical. Okay. I can't sing, y'all. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> Want me to try? <laughs> <laughs> I feel pretty. <laughs> I'm so with you. Too funny, I agree. <laughs> That's what Regina said about the hair thing. Sorry, Patrick. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Okay. Yeah. You ready to go? Okay, so that's all I have for you all today. Thanks for tuning in. It is Drika Morning, and it has been such a joy to talk to you all today. Thank you, Scarlett, for being here with your wolf mask. I gotta and make it a little weird. Yeah, that's, that's an artist for you, though. They do weird stuff. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>